right, I think we are live. Check the camera. Yay. I'm a couple of minutes early, going to give it some time, let it notify everyone, and then we'll get started. Hi, Norma. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Mary Lou. Hi, Connie. I thought you guys might be getting those notifications any second. Hi, Gail. Irma, hope you're doing good tonight. Good evening, Louise. Hi, Mary Ann. There's Diana. Tonight we're going to be doing one of Louisa's miniatures. You came in a half hour ago? Oh, that's weird. It's not showing. It usually shows me who's here. Oh, maybe you didn't make a comment. Uh, that might have been it. It usually shows me comments people make before I get here, but it, I didn't see anything, so I didn't think anybody was here with me. I thought I was all alone. <laughs> no one should have to craft alone, right? Alright guys, I'm going to play the intro and we're going to get started. But you were, oh, you were heating up dinner. I see. Um, don't forget the Community Create Challenge is going on. And I did a short video showing you guys how to enter in on that one. Um, and I also covered it in our live on Tuesday. So if you're not quite sure how to enter, you can review back to that. Um, and I'm going to kind of cover it tonight too because we're using Louisa's little mini box or she what'd you call it louise your tiny tiny lidded box tiny lidded box is what she called it um so we're doing that box tonight and we're using we're incorporating the um community create challenge image into it so any of you guys that are struggling for something to um to do to enter in that project and also do a Valentine's project, you've got everything you need. Well, actually, you've got everything you need for three give for for my giveaway for the Community Create Challenge and for Valentine's Day. So you've got something that's going to knock out all three projects with with one. So I thought I would do something really quick and easy for you guys on that. Hey, Diana, they're great for gifting. Don't forget, people have birthdays all year long. We hope, anyway. <laughs> so, um, they're great. it'll make a great gift for somebody. Uh, 
Um, just making hi, Swirly. All right, and we have our calendar. <coughs> Excuse me. And on Monday, we're going to start Flower Week, uh, and it will run into February. We're going to be doing some felt and crepe and cardstock flowers. Um, I'm going to try to set up the lives where each one, if we have enough time, that I can show you each one in each medium. So, um, hopefully, 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 if we have time. All right, and let's see. Don't forget the current sale, 40% off. Guys, if you didn't see it, I posted in the groups. If you have Cricut Access, there is a Maker Bundle. Not a Maker 3, a Maker Bundle. But it's a bundle. And if you have Access, it's $251. That's amazing. It's $279 if you don't have Access. But for $9.99, you can add Access to the cart and still save another $17. It's $28 or $18. It's $28 if you already have access that you save off of it. So, awesome deal. Please use those links down below that I have in the description of the video and go check that out. Um, let's see. Hi, Norma. Oh, Norma. I saw Norma. I said hello earlier. Not sure you heard me. Um, let's see. And then you have my current giveaway. And my giveaway is that you have to use any heart in access well the community create challenge is a heart image in it so you can use the same image for the giveaway so make sure that you're entering um let's see next we have i'm just gonna pop over to design space and show here it is right here and I took my photos before I put my rhinestones on, so it's not in the photo there, but you'll see it here if you're live with me. Hi, Debbie. Welcome. So this is what we're going to be making. Super easy, simple file um, that Louise set up, and all you have to do, you can group everything and enlarge it if you want a bigger box. Or you can even go a little bit smaller because I think, I don't know what Louise's original exact measurements were on here because I forgot to look it up from the original file that I had. And um, I did stretch this one just a teeny tiny bit. It wasn't much. So um, we're going to be using it for Hershey Kisses even though I don't have any Hershey Kisses. It's perfect for those. So let's, and if you guys have any design space questions, you need help on anything that we've covered this month, because we have covered inside and outside of design space, and we did a small series on it, so we have a playlist. If you haven't seen any of those, there is a playlist for learning design space, and all of our videos from this month are in there, including unboxing and getting set up with your crickets. How do you use the $10 off and free shipping? Janet, if you are speaking of the uh, access quarterly, you're going to put in your code WINTER10 and it will automatically do its thing. That code is WINTER10 and it will automatically do what it's supposed to do. If you're having an issue with it, you would need to call support. There's nothing that um, I can do to assist with it. That is all on support. It has nothing. You cannot use two codes. You can't use that and our group code cuties. So if you're trying to do that, you're going to have to pick the group code cuties for 10% off and free shipping of $100 in eligible items or your winter 10 code. You can't do both. You're eating Hershey Kisses right now, Mary Lou. Save some for your boxes. You're going to need them. How stinking cute are these? There's my little rhinestone on that. I love this little box, Louise. I love it. This is the second or third time I've used it, and I think I just got it from you in December. 
<laughs> so um, I, I'm loving it. And then I did a little rhinestone on that one. And I did use some foam dots to pop these up, guys, to give them some dimension. So they're even cuter in person. This one's got a little bit more dimension than the others. But you can decide if you want to do two on there or one. And I didn't have any Hershey Kisses, but guess what? It holds the little Dove candies. You have to put them in there um, on the short side, but they, but they do fit. And I even put some little packing in there. How cute is that? Janet, the code is WINTER10. They sent it to you in an email. It's the same code for everybody. WINTER10. If you don't have access, it's not going to work. But if you have access, it should work. Yeah, it's cute. Instead of just handing them a little piece of candy or putting several candies in a dish, you can give them their own little personal candy. They'll love it. They'll love it. So I've got a couple of them folded up here, um, and we're going to go over and fold this one so you guys can see. This is the base, and I cut a base from each one of the colors. I used the colors from the image that they had in there because I love the, the three color that they put together. I don't generally use colors, this many colors in a, in a project like this of different tones. Or different, totally different colors, I should say, not tones. Um, so I thought, why not? So I've got the base all folded up. Everything is a mountain fold or a valley fold. And you can use your bone folder on there and get really good crisp edges. Make sure you do that on these. So got that, and then you have your lid, and it's the same thing. You're going to fold everything in a mountain fold, or away from you, however you want to determine it. You're a little scared to retire. You work two days a week. I'm seriously thinking about retirement, guys. I need to get prepared. So there we have the lid. Now, just for quickness of these, because you're just giving them away, and I found that it's a lot easier for these little ones, when they're small, to use a tape runner. Um, you can use glue, or wet glue. And if you're doing a larger box, I would use wet glue. But these little teeny tiny ones, tape runner works really well. And I just grabbed my Tombow one. I just grabbed one out of my bin, so not for any particular brand. And the way that I do it is this is the outside of my box, and I just go in and put the tape runner on these four tabs. All right, and then I flip it over, and I do the all the outside tabs. One on each end. Oops. Didn't want to stick that down. Try not to stick it down. Hold it in the center is what I generally do. And then on these two sides. Okay, so now you've got adhesive here, 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 and here on the inside of your box. And here, 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 and here on the outside of your box. And you're just going to fold that in. Get that corner nice and square. Fold this other one in on this side. Just work your way around, going around, keeping it square. And give them a good press. Then you're just going to fold your tabs in. This gives the box a nice little finished look on the top edge. When you're working with smaller boxes, you can do that versus with larger. And then I take my bone folder and just go in and rub down all four sides. Okay, super easy. And I got a little thing of shreds over here. It won't hold more than a couple, two, maybe three, depending on the size of your shreds. We're gonna tuck those in, put in our candy. 
set it to the side, and then we're going to do our lid. Basically the same thing. Um, it's going to be hard to see that, isn't it? Let's see. I still have my mat here. There we go. So I'm just going to take my tape runner and do the four little tabs here. Do those four tabs and then flip it over and I'm going to do all of the outside tabs. And again, you're just going to fold up your sides to give it, make it square. Walking that around. And then again, you're going to fold in your top tabs to give it that finished look. All right. And again, I'm just going to take my bone folder and give them a good press down. To me, the bone folder is easier than trying to get my fingers in on these little bitty pieces. Much easier to do it that way. And then you can place your lid right on top of the box. Now let's see. On the pink one, I did it this way. Um, got this piece here, and then I did... The red circle and then the love piece. So get all of your pieces together and this is where I did use wet glue because it's just easier and on the back right here oops I can't squeeze that and it's stopped up. Let me get my other one. Just a teeny tiny amount of glue. You don't need a whole lot on here. You don't want it squishing everywhere. Well, I'm having all sorts of glue issues, guys. Something's got to give. Let's see. You still do book work. Oh yeah, Norma, that's right, that um, personalized box. We have gotten some use out of that thing, haven't we? We we use it almost every holiday for, it's been, what, six years now? Six, maybe, maybe. yeah, six years. Oops, I almost did that wrong. We're going to place this onto the red square and get that one completely lined up, or the red circle, not the square. All right, and then I put a foam dot on this piece, and I got my Bitty Sparkles from Close to My Heart, Judy Barron's LaRue, one of our mods. She sells Close to My Heart if you don't know anybody. Get up there, and I wanted I wanted that kind of center. There we go. So get that centered up, and then we're going to peel that liner. I have a hard time getting that centered up if I don't hold it with tweezers. Pop that down. And then we're going to do a little glue on the back of this. Or if you want to pop dot it up, it's totally up to you. And right on top of the box. Get it, get it centered. There we go. Isn't that cute? Look how quick that was. We're going to do the other two as well. Just so you guys, if you want to watch how I glue... Yeah, you need tweezers when you're working with tiny pieces like this, it, especially if you have fingernails like me. I, I can't. I can't pick them up. <laughs> and I'm going to flip it over. Got those four tabs. 
and then do the outer tabs. Is anybody having any design space questions, problems, anything that you're running into? I've noticed today that a few of us, have, including myself, are having some um, where it's making us sign in for some reason every time we open it up and then it doesn't give us the login box. But if you keep clicking sign in, it will eventually open up for you. And you don't really have to log in unless you haven't logged in in the last 30 days. If it logged you out for that reason, you'll have to log in. Another one there. You don't have to have the shreds if you don't want them. I just think it's just an added touch that's cute. Now he needs a lid. You had to you had to do it too, Gail? Yeah, it's not all of us. It's only some of us. They know about it. They're working on it. So just bear with it. Just keep clicking sign in until it either gives you the login box or it um, opens up. Are you using the beta by chance, um, Gail? Or are you on the regular? Okay, you're on the regular, so, yeah, and I'm on beta, so it's affecting both. Okay, good to know. Hey, Kathy. We're just chatting and putting these little Hershey Kiss boxes together. I think I missed my score line on that one. Oops. I fixed it. There we go. Let me move over a spot to do this because I have glue on my paper there. And on the teal base, I just kept my uh, the bases on the same color as the base of the box. But you can swap these out and do them any way that you want to do them. Let's see what was next. This one goes on top. No, this one. I need that circle. And I am going to use foam dots between all of these. Foam dot there. And I'll do another one on the back of the heart. And I want another little rhinestone. Right in the center. Love. Super cuteness. I have to say, Louise, this box is just cute overload. I got my, I got this a little too sticky. I'm using a gum eraser to get some of my tape runner off my paper here so that my project doesn't stick to it. All better.
<laughs> You're so funny, Louise. Yes, you could do three different sizes on this. You could do... You, there, this is a very, very, very versatile little box. Um, you can do it for individual candies or for... Um, oops, what did I do there? Oh, I stuck two of the other ones. Get back in there. I wasn't ready for that one yet. <laughs> and... You could do several different sizes on this. Um, I didn't make it big enough for a Hershey Nugget because we did the little mailboxes that held the nuggets. So I didn't want to do another candy that used the same candy. I wanted to do something different for you guys so that you had some choices. Yeah, you could tie it with the ribbon. You could. Super, super cute. Lots of ideas, guys. Keep those ideas rolling. Thanks, Kathy. Louise rescued me with this box at Christmas and... Like I said a while ago, I've gotten my use out of it, for sure. Missed that one, got it all on my mat. But you can, you can make these while you're talking on your phone, or have your kids help make them. Um... While you're chatting with uh, somebody online, Zooming, they're just so easy. Because we don't want anything complicated for one tiny piece of candy, right? Something quick and easy with a more bang for the buck. And then this one, I glued the heart right to the box. And then I put, I'm stuck in my glue there. Then I put a foam dot on the back of this heart. So I can get it even. Yeah. It's hard to get even if you're holding it with your fingers, but if you're using your tweezers, you can get it pretty much dead on. And then I just did, I didn't pop dot this one up because we had the hole in the center, but I just did a little bit of glue. Using wet glue with this one, you get have a little bit of slide time. And then another dot. And guys, oops, lost that one. One bitty dot down. And I put that stone on that one like it was a necklace. I put it right up to the tip of that heart. How stinking cute are these? I told you guys tonight was going to be quick. Clean up my glue mess again. Oh, that's cool, Gail. Treat boxes the size of Texas, or the shape of Texas, <laughs> I should say.
Yes, they are. Very cute. Thank you, Louise, for allowing us to share these. There's one set, and oops, there's one set, there's another set. Can I post a link for Close to My Heart? Let me see if I have that. Um, let's see. Let me pop over here. Um, close to my heart. And it may make me sign in to get her link. Let me try that. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if that works. Oh, I have to go over to... That'll make y'all dizzy with all of those extra windows popping through there. Let me come over here. Those infinity windows. There you go. See if that opens. That should be her link. And if um, any of you other ladies are close to my heart, you can post your link in there too if you need, if you'd like. I don't mind. Um, it could be, Diana, uh, if you can, some states might be difficult, but you can get close. It would take some cutting and some work. You'd just have to do your strips down the, walking around the edge. You're very welcome. Yeah, I, this is one of my favorite products I get from them. Hey, while you're there, Mary Lou, you might want to check out those little Valentine's hearts they got. I got a bag of them, and I may go back and get another bag. Let's see. Yeah, these are one of my favorite staples from them, but I got... Now I probably won't be able to find them. Oh, there they are. There are many hearts, and I got these to do my shakers with. They are so stinking cute. Look at those. I don't know what they're made of. They feel, they kind of feel like foam, but they also feel like paper, thick paper. I love them. So cute. Going to be really cute in a shaker card. I know the colors were just... Remember I said that coral color, that corally color pink was in? That's kind of like a... It has like a peachy and a purple tone in the pink. This is going to match those papers perfect that I showed you guys. Because every one of these colors are in that paper pack. Every one of them. I don't know if I can get my hands. I'm in the process of redoing my craft room organization. This paper pack from Joann's, all of those colors are in here. Look. That matches. And that matches. And let's see. I don't know if that's the same coral. Yep, that's the same. It's. I mean, it's exact. I was just amazed. It's going to create a really, really, really cute... I'm looking through this pack to see if I can find that page. 
If I haven't used it all, if I have, I'm going to have to go get some more. Well, shoot. Oh, wait. Maybe. This is the lighter shade of it. This is the lighter shade of that purple, but this color, this purpley color, is in this pack. I think I've used it all. I didn't think I would use it at all, and I've used every bit of it. That's a little, that doesn't have as much pink, but it's really close. It's super close. But all of those colors came out of this one pack. How stinking lucky was I on that? Yeah, it it's not worth it if it's not on sale, Mary Lou. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but if it's on sale, when they put it on the 50% off sale, that's when you need to snap it up. Because, I mean, you get 60 sheets, and it's 80 pound, solid core. And so when they put it on sale, that's when to grab it. I mean, it's a good price. I think at my Joann's it's $18.99, I think. I'm not, don't hold me to that because I don't know. $18.99 for the pack. So it's a good deal, but not a good deal if you're buying multiple different packs. Wait for it to go on sale. The heart show us the other side. This is number, if you're on that close to my heart link, it's uh, Z, as in zebra, 4523. That's the number. Z4523. Yours was twenty one ninety five. It may vary from store to store, Mary Lou. So grab grab some of those, and if you don't have shaker windows, or you can use Cricut acetate to make your shaker windows and foam tape. Um, so you don't really have to have those, but if you want shaker windows and domes, you can do all that. But you can you can make your own. And um, Louise, and we're doing her that on the 3rd of February, I think. We're doing her little dome shaker that she put candies in. Isn't that what we said we were doing, I think, on the 3rd? <coughs> and she, she made one with the clear acetate from Cricut. Okay, that's what I thought. I, I just wanted to be sure I didn't. Ha I don't have my notebook right in front of me. I looked at it about twenty minutes ago, so I was hoping my memory. Thursday is the second, yeah. But next week on that week, that's the Friday. I think it was Friday. I had planned to do one on Friday. I have to look at my. I think it was. Scheduled to be an extra live, Diana, is what I was doing. Yeah, because I'll be live on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday next week. So Friday is when you guys get your four lives in a week. Eight ninety nine for the paper or or the biddies or the hearts. Close to my heart product isn't inexpensive. I'm I'm just gonna say that, but it is quality. It is quality.
and I love all of their embellishments, things like that. I, I'm, I'll be 100% honest. I like some of their pattern papers, but pattern papers I use for panels. I don't use them for box bases and things. Um, to me, the paper's too light for box bases. Um, if you're getting seeing this paper for eight, if you're seeing this paper for eight ninety nine at Joanne's Patty, I encourage you to buy all you can get <laughs> because that's a fantastic price. You're getting sixty sheets of eighty pound solid core premium quality cardstock. It's as close as you're going to get to Cricut. As a matter of fact, I showed last week. Uh, the Cricut Red, the new Cricut Red that I got is the same textured pattern as this Park Lane. I re actually really think it's the same cardstock. Feels like it and looks like it to me. Which, and I, I believe that it's AC Moore as well. I think it comes from AC Moore. Just packaged for Joann's as Park Lane. Grab it up, Patty. If if that paper's on sale at Joann's right now, I would I would grab it up. Make sure it's the 80 pound solid core and snap it up. It's an excellent. That's better than 50% off. So yeah, 60% off. Yeah, grab it. I've been waiting for it to go on sale, so I may I may go and look. After I get my craft room back together. <laughs> after. So everybody's good on design space. No questions. We covered everything all month long. So I know that you'll be making something soon. And you'll have questions. So if you don't have them tonight, you will soon. But Mary Lou, you said yours wasn't on sale, so you might want to go check it. It went on; it's on sale over at Patty's now. So check again today. Hopefully, Cricut will get their card stock back in stock soon, so we don't have to go looking. I prefer to shop at Cricut. That's where I prefer. I have to, Gail. I have to rearrange. I'm in a um, two-bedroom apartment while we house hunt, and this room is a 10 by 10 room, so I have all of my stuff in a 10 by 10 room, including all of my camera equipment. How do you know what lines are in an access project if they don't give you any info? Do you mean your operation types, Janet? Can you print a full page of the Cricut patterns instead of choosing the color? Um, not if they're Cricut ones, um, not if they're Cricut ones, because the patterns you can't pull out. If it's one you uploaded, you're going to do it before you go into design space, and then you're just going to treat it as a regular piece of paper. This is, sorry guys, we'll get in here in just a second. Hopefully it's opening. Yay. Um, so let me just pick a project. Let's pick this one. Okay, so how do you... I think this is what you asked me, Janet. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. What the line types are in a access project if they don't give you any info. 
all of your info about what they used, like this heart lollipop, if you scroll down, it should, well, this one tells you the related projects, tells you what you're going to need, Cricut foil, the scoring wheel. This particular project does not tell you, so it comes from this one. So let's click on that one and see. Yes. So if you click on that one and scroll down where it's the original, it will tell you what images were used in the project. As far as lines go, we used to, in the old design space over here, we had an icon like the eyeball. We had one that told us um, if it was print and cut, if it was foil, if it was um, draw, a pen. We had all that, and we don't have it now. So you have to literally click on the image. When you click on the image, come over here to operation type at the top, and it will tell you that that, that part of the image is a foil line. That's a basic foil. This one is a basic cut. This one is a basic cut. And so, and this one is also a basic cut, but if I were to, uh, let's see, it's not going to let me, let me uh, ungroup it and see. Ungroup, duplicate first, yes, and then ungroup because I don't want to mess up the original. If I wanted to put that back, if I wanted to flatten that, I have to detach everything and then flatten. And over here you can see that it still tells you that it's a flatten for print and cut and gives you the icon. But the other images do not do that anymore. Hopefully they're going to give that back to us. Um, yours comes in as untitled and it's not clickable. Is this an upload, Janet? If you did an upload, let's say from, I don't know, Dreaming Tree, maybe, that's going to be true. Um, let's, let's cover that, because that's something I haven't covered, and you guys should know that. Um, it, it's, it's kind of important. So let me just do a new project. And... So Dreaming Tree is actually 3D SVG.com. See if I can slide over here. Um, and let me, I don't generally come over here, but let's see. It's been a while since I've been here. I don't know where to log in at. There we go. Let's make the page bigger. That helps, right? Um, so let's go to free SVG files. Let's just go with this card. I'm going to add it to my cart. Let's go to my cart. And I am going to check out. It's going to make me log in. There we go. All right. So once I've logged in and I've got my file, I'm going to check out. Um, and that is all wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> and confirm. And it's been processed. So I'm going to continue. And it should go into my orders. Is that where it goes, guys? Does anybody know? I, I haven't been here since he did redid the site. My account. There we go. So it's right here. And then I'm going to download it. 
going to allow and it's going into my downloads. So there is my Holly note card right there. So I am going to come over here to Design Space. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to open that folder up, and it's gonna open up over here. So let's bring that over so you guys can see it. So here's my folder. I've unzipped it. I have it, and then there's the SVG. So extras, and this is not with all, but this is him. And you can see you have a solid score line on the extras if you want a solid one. And generally, that's what I upload. It's just easier for me. So, um, and that's just another envelope. I'm just going to do the envelope one piece just so you can see. SS means solid score envelope. So I'm going to upload, and I'm just going to drag that in. Oops, I'm not on upload, am I? Upload upload and then we're going to drag that in. Where did it go? My downloads. There it is. So I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to slide that out of the way. We don't need it. You're going to name it. You're going to tag it. And I'm going to put Dreaming Tree Envelope and upload. And then we're going to click on it, and we're going to add it to our cart. So now you have those solid lines. When you do a Dreaming Tree file like this, you can see down here it is not attached, number one. It is very important that when you do these, and these lines are a little bit long, um, and I can tell you right now in Shortcuts a lot, these are really super hard to do. Um... Design Space will read the lines, but it will read it as a cut. So I'm just going to ungroup this. You're going to select the line, and I am going to... I don't want all of those. Can I ungroup them? That's as much... Oh, I have to contour. You have to contour them out if you need to change them, like I do need to change those, the height of them. So I, in, in my opinion, on this one, I would just go and get brand new score lines and insert my own. But you would have to, if you want to keep the score lines they have, come in, change that to score, select it, and then attach, and then it's going to be ready for cutting. That's the only way that you can do those, Janet. Because Design Space has a score line in it. Most of the design programs do not. They do not have a score line option like we do in Design Space. So they have to use a regular cut line. And then when you upload it into Design Space, you have to change those cut lines to score lines. And then you have to attach them because they don't have that attach option in there most of the time. The solid line on the lid is a cut line and it doesn't make sense to you. I don't know what, do you mean in the file that I did tonight? Because I just cut it and mine wasn't. If it's a, there's a line on something and it's untitled and it's not clickable, it's probably flattened to it or part of the design. You're either going to have to unflatten it and remove it or you're going to, like I just did with this one, I couldn't select an individual line, so I had to contour it. And then contour it out is what I had to do. I mean, I can put it back. It's going to make me, let's see. I can put it back in there. Um, but you, I mean, otherwise it's flattened as a print cut. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, without a screenshot, it's going to be hard to tell what you're, you're asking me. Um, because if I go to, 
and bring this in and customize. If you're talking about tonight's project, those are not cut lines. They're all score lines. Every one of them. Every one that I click on. This is the this is the lid and every line attached to it. I'm looking up here at my operation as a score. It's not a cut. Nothing is a cut. Another in access. You know, without seeing what I need, Janet, and if you guys don't know how to take a screenshot, let's go over that. Um, I'm not sure on Windows. I think you have a tool called a snipping tool, or you used to, and you'll use that snipping tool and create your screenshot. If you're on an iOS phone, it's your uh, volume button and your power button. You hold them together at the same time, and it will screenshot. But when we do a screenshot, we need if the lid is your problem area, what we need you to do is ungroup it. I duplicated, sorry. What we need you to do is ungroup your group and select the piece that is the issue so that it highlights in the layers panel. And then screenshot on a Mac, you hold Command, Shift, and the number four, and it gives you these cross arrows. And then you drag it and you take a screenshot of the entire screen. I'm just going to open that up. And then that is what you can show us. Like, this is my screenshot. That way you can show us, this is my problem piece. This is what it says here on that piece. And then you can take another screenshot and show us which exactly, which line is giving you the problem. You'll select that and take another screenshot so that it shows us this line is a score and whatever the issue might be. Windows has the snip tool. Image M4D189. Okay, let's see. Hashtag. M4D189. Not coming up for me. Check that number, please. What is the name of it, Janet? What is the name on it? What is the image name? Is it that little bitty box, that little bitty tiny box that's in access on um, bags, tags, boxes, and more? Or, wait a minute, let me just find it. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm, there, it, that one has a known issue. Every time I use it, I have to rework the file. That number's not coming up for me, so um, Yeah, if you can right-click in the Layers panel and get the name of that image, Janet, so I might be able to find it. I don't. I know somebody used it, and they reworked it for theirs as well. I used to know which one exactly that it was. I don't think that's it. I know it when I see it. A little cube box. I used my hashtag, Janet. It's the box big enough for collecting Valentine's. Oh, okay, gotcha. Let's go projects.
Is it the one with the clear sides? Yum tall box. That's not working for me. B9. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Got it. All right. All right, so here we are. Here's the box. We're going to ungroup. That has a cutout in the middle of it. That's the lid. It is set to score. These little tabs are going to cut. That's supposed to cut out because this glues. I don't know why I keep hitting duplicate over there. Because that cutout is going to be on there. You're going to ungroup. Dip, and I still did it. I'm working around a post here. Ah, because I can't. Let's duplicate and contour. Old box. Old, old box. Old file. All right, so now I have the two pieces. This piece is going to glue to the back of that. So arrange that to the back. And then that's going to be a little inset that you can write on or, or stamp on or whatever. We used to do a lot of stamping. Um, so that one's totally cut out for stamping. And let's take a look at that one. That one's set to score. That's not cut. That one's set to score as well. So I. This is it right here, Janet. So you've evidently clicked on something and accidentally changed it if there's a line going through it because I don't have that. Mine's all score. It's all score. I can tell because they're dashed and it says um, if I click on the uh, layers panel it tells me that it's set to score in the operation type. You need to open it up again and put it back on your canvas because you've clicked something and you've changed something and that's why yours doesn't come in correctly. Yeah, all the there's there's nothing every every score line in every line in here are all scores. Everything's a score. There's no cut lines except the oval and it's supposed to cut out because it has a layer piece under it so that you have a pop of color and then this piece this little oval piece you can write on or stamp on. Yeah, I would bring uh, as Marianne said, I would bring I would just scrap what you have, put it in the trash and bring the bring it in again. Start over. Because you've evidently or or either you're going to have to go in and look because if it's set on a cut line it's because you changed it to a cut line. If it looks like this, those are cut lines. If it's like this, those are cut lines. If it looks like that right there, all you've got to do is right here in the layers panel, click on the tall box, the score lines above the base, and change them back to score. And that will correct your file. This one I have changed to cut. I would have to go back in and change it to score to fix my file. Yeah, there's a square piece right here. This one and this one came in attached. I, I contoured them so I could separate them. But they came in they came in like this. This square piece goes under the lid and this piece goes behind the yum. So if you 
want to contour them so that you can um, see them better and work with them. If you want to do two different colors, you're going to ha have to contour it so that you have two pieces so that I can make that one blue if I want and this one yellow if I want. So you have to contour them to separate the two, but one goes behind this cutout and one goes behind that cutout. Yeah, exactly, Gail. If you want the see-through option, they would be acetate. And I, I generally, when I'm using acetate, make mine a very, very pale blue to tell me that that is an acetate piece. If you open up my files and mine are that color, then that means it's acetate. If it's a super pale pinky gray, it's vellum. Did that answer the question? Did that help? You got it again and that price isn't there. I'm not sure what you mean. If you have access, it's an access image, I believe. I have access. It didn't charge me. Um, you might have a glitch in design space. Sometimes, guys, when it says, um, when it tells you that it's like when I hit make it and it says it's $4.98, if you hit continue or it's $1.99 or 99 cent, whatever it's showing, if you hit continue and you have access and it's an access image, 99% of the time it's not going to charge you. It's just a glitch. And if you move forward, it'll just go on to the matte screens. Um, if it is trying to charge you, you can click on it and it will tell you exactly what it's charging you for. And you will not be charged unless you enter your Cricut ID password and say OK. If you can't ungroup, there's something going on. You need to remove your design space and reinstall it. Because I just, I just did mine. You can't ungroup the score lines, if that's what you're asking, because they made them, again, this is an older file, very old file, made from the older design space. Let me um, come up here. You can see that you can't ungroup right here, right? It's a very, very, very old file. You can, uh, I can detach the score lines but I can't detach the score lines from themselves. Usually in the files we make, you can detach the score lines. You can't do that on these. You have to detach them from the piece if you want to change it. And then you can, if you don't like something about it or there's something that you want to change or move, you're going to have to select it. That's what I was showing you with the other file and contour it out. So I'm going to contour out that top one, say that it's, for whatever reason, it's off a little bit. Um, and I just want to do another one. You can sit here and contour all this. That's what I was telling you. Instead of doing all that, it's so easy just to go over and get a score line and just recreate it yourself. Detach it and just start over and make your own. And then you don't have to do all that contour stuff. You can go in here and add those score lines. I wouldn't even do that on this box um, because it's not really necessary. Those tabs are going to fold regardless, but if you want a score line on them, you can do them individual score lines and just um, rotate them around and add them on. Um, or you can just put a square in there and fold those tabs all on your little old self with a bone folder or or your scraper, fold it against your scraper. Yeah, sometimes just closing design space and bringing it back will help. Yeah, I'm on beta too. I'm on beta as well.
you mean you can't ungroup this piece? You have to contour it. You can't. It's because they sliced out an oval from the lid. They sliced out an oval line from the lid. Um, you can duplicate it and contour it. And get the two pieces. And even go further with it if you want to do that. And contour out that one too. So, I mean, depends on how you want to do it. You just pulled it in and all the pieces are on yours too, yeah. So, something's going on. You accidentally remove something or you're not, you're trying to do something but you're using the wrong tool to do it, maybe. She couldn't ungroup the full project that came in. I was able to. All of mine are separate. And I'm on beta too, so. I agree, Diana. Sometimes, guys, when you get an update, um, especially if you haven't kept your design space up to date, it doesn't install properly or it can't install. Um, so the best thing to do, and these are the steps that I take when I have trouble, uninstall design space, put it in the trash, remove the app completely. Then I search my computer for any instances of Cricut design space and I remove all of it. I put it in the trash. I then empty the trash. I then reboot my computer. And when I say reboot, I don't mean restart. I mean reboot. Restart's just going to restart it. Reboot is going to shut it completely down. And then you have to hit the power button to bring it back on. That's a reboot, not a restart. So reboot by completely shutting 100% down and bringing it back up. Then install your fresh copy of Design Space because you put everything in the trash, you threw the trash out, and you can clear your history and all of that kind of stuff if you want to, your browser history and all that while you're at it, and take care of that. And then come back in and put in a fresh copy of Design Space. Then if you're still having issues, it's something else. So do I, Kathy. So do I. When it, when it, I let it go ahead and do its thing and update, and then I trash it all and reinstall my fresh copy. It, it causes a lot less problems later. Guys, you have to clear those caches. You have to clear your caches. If you're not clearing your caches, you're, you're only making it a disservice to yourself because you're bogging down design space. Um, and, and anything else too, just that, that's with any program. If you don't clear the caches and reboot them occasionally, you're just keeping a bunch of waste around um, and, that you don't need. I lost my window here. Let me see if I can get you guys back. Are you over here? Uh, there it is. Maybe I can... Yeah, I lost my YouTube window, so I can't chat. I can't give it to you. Um, Marianne, if you can post for me um, if you can post for me a uh, link to clear cache, I accidentally closed my window and closed out my YouTube. even though we're, I'm still live streaming, I can't see YouTube. And I'm not allowed to chat on the Streamlabs. It tells me I have to sign in to chat, and then I sign in, and it still tells me I have to sign in to chat. It doesn't let me post. I have to do all my posting in YouTube. Oh, you're welcome, Irma. You're welcome, Kathy, Connie. 
you have parts or ungrouping, something, it's something with the file, Janet, and if you want to send me some screenshots, I can further help you with it, but I have to have some screenshots to see what you're seeing in order to help you effectively. Thank you, Marianne. You're welcome, Joyce. I appreciate you guys joining me. I'm sorry we ran a little bit over today. Uh, I thought it was going to be a short one, but I'm glad that you guys had questions and asked them. I love to help you guys with your design space issues. So glad we could do something today. I was, I was afraid our live was going to be too short. <laughs> So I will catch you guys on Monday. We're going to do some type flower. I will try to get it posted up either Saturday or Sunday. Again, I'm redoing my craft room, and I haven't cut the project yet and taken photos. So as soon as I get that done and set up, I will get the live posted for you guys. Yes, Diana, that's correct. The gray pieces, which I have changed to blue, I contoured them so that I could separate the two pieces. They came in like this. You have to contour and take one of them out, duplicate it, and take the other one out. So that you have both pieces. I didn't ungroup it, Janet. I did not ungroup it. I contoured. Let me show you one more time. This is the piece, and it comes in and it's gray. When you bring it into Design Space, it is a gray color, just like this. This is how it comes in. And if you look up here, I do not have an ungroup button. This is an older file. They welded these two together so that they would go to the mat together, okay, in that file. The only way to separate those two pieces is to duplicate it so that you have four pieces. Then go to your contour, take out the small square, go to the other one, go to your contour, and take out the large square. Now they appear to be ungrouped, but they're not because I can duplicate that and hit the contour button and bring that other piece back to its original state. It's the contour tool. That's what's wrong. You're thinking about ungrouping and you're needing to use your contour tool and not your group tool. So that's the difference. Grouping, grouping you can ungroup and contour you have to take one out and keep the other. Um, I don't know if the live chat will be Irma, um, but you can you can still leave messages. You sure can. You can you can still message on there, and people can reply on messages. I don't I don't close comments, so you can go in and comment, and you can help each other in comments. But the live chat will actually close. But you can see live chat in the replay if you want. You just have to click a button if you don't have it turned on. You can turn it on and off. So if you don't want to see the live chat, you can turn it off. All right, guys. Thank you for the wonderful questions. Yay! I hope y'all learned something. That, I hope that that clarified it for you, Janet. If it didn't, again, take me some screenshots and we'll go over it. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you on Monday. Thank you.